Hello, Jeff Zwerink here, and welcome back to Give and Take, the segment of our show where we explore important and breaking scientific ideas and see how they relate to the truth of Christianity. Today, I'm joined again by Dr. Fuzz Rana, and we're going to discuss Elon Musk's new venture called Neuralink. Fuzz, it's good to have you here today. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me. So why don't we just start out, uh, kind of give us some background on, you know, what is Neuralink and, and why should we be interested in it? Yeah, well, you know, Elon Musk is, is probably somebody that needs no introduction, but he's a fascinating figure that really is casting a vision for what the future might look like through technology development. So with his companies like SpaceX, he's looking at commercializing space flight and maybe colonizing Mars. And with Tesla, he's looking at revolutionizing how we transport ourselves from location to location here on the surface of the earth. But with Neuralink, he's continuing in this vein where he wants to develop these, what he calls neural implants, which are really brain computer interfaces, which are devices that again are implanted in the brain that essentially serve as an interface between the human brain and electronic devices. And so he's trying to develop the next generation of these neural implants. So, so this sounds like really Star Trek-y stuff. I mean, this is, so if I, if I get what you're saying, it's like we're implanting things in the brain to not only feed information in, but also extract control mechanisms out so that we can control other things without physically moving our body. Is that the general idea? That's, that's exactly the idea. And, you know, what Elon Musk is proposing isn't new. People have been working on brain computer interfaces for several decades. And the idea here is that these interfaces can detect electrical activity in the brain from neurons and then interpret that activity and then control computer hardware, computer software, or even machine hardware. And so most people are looking at this for biomedical purposes to help people that are locked in because of a a brain injury or a stroke, or to give amputees the ability to control robotic prosthetic limbs, and, and the list goes on and on. And, and so people have been exploring this for a while, but these prototypes are really expensive, and they're still cumbersome, and there's a lot of technical issues with them. So what Elon Musk is trying to do is really produce the next generation, but then figure out how to, to commercialize this with the idea that this could be the next generation uh, of Alexa or Siri. So instead of using voice commands to interface with electronic devices, we could just simply think uh, what we want those devices to do and they'll uh, obey our thoughts. So it sounds like there, there's kind of two challenges that one, there's the biological challenge of how do you interface with the brain? That's a challenging thing. But then there's also a, uh, you know, I'll just term it a software challenge. How do you get it to actually there's an enormous amount of data to deal with that. So let's kind of deal with the first. What are, I mean, our bodies are designed to keep foreign objects out and get rid of them. Those are invaders. How do we do that? And I mean, can, can we do that in a way where we can put stuff inside our brain and have it work properly for a long term? Yeah, well, you know, the, the most effective brain computer interface are what are called invasive ones, where you're implanting them literally into the region of the brain that you want to, you know, detect electrical activity in. And the problem is, is, of course, you're performing brain surgery on people, and this can cause damage to the brain, bleeding, it can lead to scar tissue formation, which is not good. Of course, it can cause the body to have an immune reaction to the electronics that are in the brain. And then there are these things called glial cells in our brain that will coat the electronics, de degrading their performance. And so Elon Musk has come up with a really slick uh, ensemble of technologies that really overcome many of these challenges. And, and the, tech, the heart of the technology are in these new electrodes that he's developed that are very, very thin and flexible that are coated with a polymer that is much more biocompatible. And so this flexibility keeps the, the, the electrodes from damaging the brain when they're inserted. He's also developed a robotic surgical device that can very precisely implant these electrodes into the brain without causing damage. So he's really made a huge step forward uh, with this technology. So it, it does seem to me that, uh, you know, at least the, the brain doesn't seem to be particularly adept at healing itself. I mean, that, uh, you know, so we talk about concussions and I know it does have some capacity, but uh, 
does the brain have a capacity to heal itself? I, I mean, how does it deal with these things that come in? Um, does do, I, I guess I'm kind of asking you to help help us understand what are the 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 technical? I, I get the the idea that our brain does some stuff. How serious is that? And and if we do cause damage, can our brain recover from it? Yeah. Well, I mean, once you start getting scar tissue forming in the brain you know, as a result of, of damage, you, you're replacing functional tissue with, again, non-functional tissue that's just filling up volume in the brain. And so you are going to be losing some brain function as a result of that. You know, and again, if, if the glial cells begin to coat the, the, the electronic device, you're gonna to have to replace it and have the patient go through another round of brain surgery. So anything you can do to make the, the electrode insertion process less damaging to the brain and much more biocompatible is going to have huge payoffs in terms of the dura durability you know, of the implant as well as, again, the feasibility of implanting this you know, into the brain of patients. So it really does seem like this has a tremendous potential for you know, people who've lost the, the use of their legs or various things because of mechanical issues of being able to put prosthetics on that are controlled by the brain, if you will. Uh, but, it, but it does seem to have a cost of the brain surgery. Are people exploring this for other reasons? Is that what e Elon Musk is really about or is there something else he's motivated by? Well, I mean, of course, you know, the, 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 the biomedical utility is important, but Elon Musk is really seeing this as, 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 again, the next generation of interface between the human and electronics. And so you want to have a very durable and inexpensive technology if you're actually going to implant this into the brains of people. But what's really interesting to me is the ultimate motivation for Elon Musk actually has to do more so with what he perceives to be a real existential threat that humanity is facing, namely the development of AI systems. He's concerned that in the near future, AI systems will be autonomous and will be so powerful that they'll far surpass our cognitive abilities as human beings and his concern is that when that happens, suddenly we will be slaves to these AI systems, that we will be subjugated by the AI systems, or we might even be driven to extinction. And so his ultimate motivation for these neural implants is that if we don't do the, create these neural implants so that we can interface our brains with computer systems to augment our cognitive abilities, to kind of create human machine hybrids, if you will, then there's no way we could ever compete with AI systems and we are doomed as human beings. So he sees an imperative to developing these neural implants that really is related to preserving, you know, our, our existence as human beings. And in a sense, he's become a transhumanist. That's kind of interesting because when you look at most of the popular movies, there's no lack of, oh, we're going to try and make humans better that end up really kind of destroying humanity. And, and it almost sounds like he's trying to save humanity by changing humanity. That either way, kind of humanity, as we know it, is kind of going to go extinct regardless if his vision is correct. Am I, am I missing something? No, no, you're not missing anything at all. I mean, this is the danger of using technology and, and putting our hope in technology to save us, you know, because uh, one, we know that technology always has unintended consequences, as you point out. Or, or that we are changing ourselves to such a degree that it's not really us that we're saving anymore. This is actually called the salvation paradox uh, for transhumanism. And so this in and of itself tells us that technology can never save us. If we really want to have the hope of you know, immortality, if we really want to be saved, we have to turn elsewhere, which of course is the, the message of the Christian faith, the message of the gospel. Well, thanks, Buzz. Fascinating discussion. I really appreciate your insight today. You know, I'd encourage you to go to reasons.org and check out Buzz's blog on this topic. It's called, Will Elon Musk's Neuralink Make It Possible to Control Electronic Devices with Our Minds? We'll help you understand the technical issues behind this, as well as the benefits that it can bring to humanity by helping people with physical disabilities, but also help you understand the apologetic issue of how, as we search for salvation, Really, Christianity has already solved that problem through Christ, not only in this life, but in the life to come.